Good morning. Welcome to this online worship service from St. Peter's United Methodist Church on this, the fourth Sunday of Easter. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, calls us to come and follow him. His voice, speaking our names, draws us towards him. We follow him without fear, for the Good Shepherd cares for us. Our hearts rejoice as we know that we can place our trust in the Good Shepherd. So come, let us enter his gate with thanksgiving. Patient and loving God, we stand at the gate and peer through. We keep creating our own ways, believing that we know what is in our own best interest, and we ignore the voice of the one shepherd who will guide us to peace and hope. We wander aimlessly and then wonder why we get so lost. Help us, Lord, to stop and listen to the shepherd's voice. Enable us to place our trust in the shepherd who has never failed us, who loves and guides our very lives. For we ask this in Christ's name.
Our gospel reading for this morning comes from the Gospel of John, the 10th chapter, beginning with verse 1. Hear the word of God. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I have always been a big fan of 1950s horror and sci-fi films. You know, movies with titles like The Creature from the Black Lagoon, The Mole People, The Blob, Monster on the Campus. The other week I saw on television that The Attack of the 50-Foot Woman was on, so I watched that. Oh, it was, it was so cheesy. It was, it was just wonderful. But one of my favorite movies from that era was the 1953 film, War of the Worlds. It was this technicolor marvel that told the story of a Martian invasion of Earth. And towards the end of the film, it looked like, it looked like things were toast for the people of Earth. It seemed like the defeat of the human race was imminent. And in this part of the movie, there's this scene of Uh, a large crowd of people who gather in a church and they're singing and they're praying together as the sounds of Martian weapons and explosions surround the outside of the sanctuary. And suddenly, these alien war machines begin to fall out of the sky as the Martians succumb to the bacteria in our atmosphere. And suddenly the world is saved and now life can return to normal. It's a powerful image in that movie of the people gathered in the church seeking shelter, seeking God's comfort. And right now we're certainly not in the middle of a Martian invasion or anything like that, but our world is under attack by a seemingly unstoppable virus. And things are bad enough that it seems that even the entire world's socioeconomic life has come to a standstill. And each of us have been forced to basically seek shelter within the confines of our own homes. It seems to me that maybe now is a time that we could use some words of comfort from God. And so I offer to you these words from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I wonder how many times you may have ever heard those words before. We often hear them read at funerals or other gatherings where we need to be reminded of God's sovereign protection and provision for those that he loves. Like a shepherd who watches over a flock of sheep, God cares for us. God provides for us. God nourishes us with what we need. Now note, I didn't say God gives us what we want. He nourishes us with what we need. He gives us shelter. He protects us. And as long as we are in the presence of the shepherd, we know that our existence, our very being, is secure. Jesus is seen in this passage from John as a shepherd who watches over his sheep at night within the security of a sheep's gate or a, a shelter. And in the morning, he calls them to come out. They hear his voice. They know his voice. And so they follow him. Why is it important that he call to them? Because he wants them to be with him. Because in his presence, they'll find protection. His protection. He wants them... He wants them to come with him because he's leading them to where they can find a fullness of life, this abundance of life. He wants to lead them to where they will find what's best for them. Now, I don't know about you, but right now I kind of feel like a sheep who's locked up in the shelter at night. You know, right now we are counting on the security of closed doors, of face masks, of rubber gloves, of social distancing to protect us from this threat that's outside the gate, this threat that's called COVID-19. I wonder, during this time, how much are we relying on the shepherd? That is, how much are we relying on Jesus? I know when I was going through my recent cancer treatments, I found myself doing a lot of praying. I was leaning very heavily on God to help me get through what was a difficult and scary time. And I imagine a lot of us are doing the same thing now with this ongoing lockdown. We're praying to God to help us get through. We're praying to God to help this danger to pass. Because there is this known threat in our lives, we're turning to God. Why? To seek shelter, to seek hope. That's what we tend to do when things go wrong. And in the risen Christ, we can find what we need. But I wonder what's going to happen when the crisis passes. When, coronavirus, when the coronavirus is no longer a problem. You know, we're praying right now for God to end the pandemic and to release us from this life of quarantine so we can go back to a life of normalcy, whatever that normal may look like, and I don't think it's going to look the same. But my question is, will we heed the voice of the shepherd once the gates open up? 
Or will it be like 9-11? Those of you who are old enough to remember when 9-11 happened, suddenly the churches were filled with people. We were afraid. We were scared. We needed a word of comfort from God. We needed to know that everything was going to be okay. But as the weeks passed, it's like people seemed to forget how we had relied on God because suddenly the churches weren't full anymore. I think about when the Israelites were leaving Egypt and they crossed the Red Sea and God parted the waters and enabled them to cross safely on dry ground. They were counting on the shepherd's care in that moment. But soon afterward, they were ready to give up. They were ready to go back to Egypt. Sheep can be safe, both within the shelter of the sheepfold and also when they venture forth, if they stay with the shepherd, if they remain under his watch, if they remain under his care. Jesus says, I am the shepherd who calls to my sheep and they follow me. I am the gateway through which my sheep move from safety to safety, from provision to provision, from strength to strength, from blessing to blessing. Now it's easy for us to focus on the shepherd when we're inside the security of the sheep's gate. And right now we're kind of secure in our little homes, aren't we? We're removed in a sense from the world and so it's easy for us to fixate on Jesus. But when the time comes that we can leave the confines of our shelter, what then? Because there's so much to distract us. The world has so much to offer. I wonder if the material driven siren song of what's out there is going to overpower the voice of the shepherd calling us to follow, calling us to stay close to him. If we heed his voice, if we follow him, if we stay close to Jesus when we venture into the world, he will lead us to where we need to be. And he will provide us with all that we need. Remember what the psalm said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Do we believe that? See, we need to get to where we count on the Lord, not only when we are afraid, not only when we feel a need for security or comfort, not only when we sense danger, but all the time. As we continue this ongoing celebration of Easter, we remember that when Christ rose from the dead, he rose to a new life and he offers us new life. But we can only find it when we follow him. At some point, this current world crisis is going to come to an end. And I don't know if it's going to happen through a divine miracle or whether it's going to happen through a scientific discovery. I really don't know. But what I do know is it will come to an end. And when it does, it's just going to be replaced at some point by another crisis. That's what happens in a fallen world. The fallen world is a scary and dangerous place to live. That's why we need a sheltering shepherd, not just now, but all the time. We need a sheltering shepherd who offers us security, comfort, and life. Like I said, all the time, regardless of what is going on around us in the world. 
And brothers and sisters, we can find that safety and security in only one place, and that is in Jesus Christ. If you place your faith in him, he will watch over you and he will cradle your life in his very hand because your life is so precious to him. I offer you these truths in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. of St. Peter's United Methodist Church. I want to thank you for joining us for this online worship service. And I also want to thank you for your continued financial support of our church and its ministries. Uh, you can send your offerings to us here at the church. You can mail them to 111 Hodges Street here in Moorhead City. And I hope and pray that soon, and very soon, we will be able to gather together as a family in one place to celebrate the security that we know in our lives, knowing that we are God's children. In the meantime, I want to urge you to continue to lift one another up in prayer, reach out to one another through text, through phone calls, through cards, however you want to do it. Let people know that you're thinking about them, let your brothers and sisters know how much you love them and how much you miss being together. And folks, we will get through this and we'll get through it together 
because that's what family does. And now go in peace. Have courage. Do no harm. Do all the good you can and stay in love with God. And may the love of God the Father, the grace of the Son, Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.